Today I'm going to show you how to clean up your music collection using a program called MP3 Tag Express. Here the product is loaded, so I'm going to go up to the Add Folder button, expand my C drive, and pick my music folder. And here we've got a bunch of music loaded. And uh, these, these bars up here, these gray bars, are separators for the folder names in the music folder. And so uh, you'll see how this works after in terms of working with uh, multiple folders at the same time. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of the uh, album in the track title, which is a problem. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and block these files. And we're going to right click and go to trimming operations, trim artist album. And we want to trim the album from the title. And this auto trim residual characters, what that'll do is that'll remove any extra dashes or white space that we may have in there. And those are fixed. And we want to do the same thing with the file names. And so go ahead, right click, trimming operations, trim artist album. And we want to trim the artist and the album from the file name. And there we go. That's, those are all cleaned up. And the last thing we might want to do here is we want to get rid of the capital I in this word in the album. So we'll go over to Edit, Album Year, and get rid of the capital I, put in a lowercase i, and we can put a year in while we're at it, 1970. We'll go ahead and we'll save. And there we go. Those are all nice and consistent. And so now for the next batch, uh, you can see that we have no tags and that would be a problem if we tried to sync these tracks over to an iPod, an iPhone, or an iTouch uh, because iTunes will require that you have a track title and so we're going to fix that by selecting all these files and I have my music arranged in such a way where I've got my artist and under the artist folder I've got each album so in this case I've got Isle of Wight, Cry of Love, Ultimate Experience those are all under my Jimi Hendrix album. Now I can use that folder and the file name structure to derive the tags and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. Now rather than right clicking I'm going to go up to uh, the series of buttons up here. These are these are quick access buttons or speed buttons if you will and I'm going to go ahead and clone to tags clone folder and file structure to tags and now we have an artist and we have an album and what we're left with is uh, these which have the underscores and we want to get rid of that we also want to get rid of that in the uh, track title as well because on an iTouch or an iPhone as you know this is going to end up being really wide we won't see all of our titles properly so we're going to clean that up and to do that rather than using um, rather than using the trim um, trim artist album function we're going to use the custom replace function and so that is found right here trim custom and I could type this all in but I won't what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to click on the first item and I'm going to copy from the title or I can copy from the file name I'll copy from the title and what that's going to do is that's going to copy this title into the Windows clipboard. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all these and go up to Trim Custom and I'm going to paste that in. I could also use the Control V to paste it in and the paste button makes it easy and so I'm going to just back this off and get rid of those characters and now we've got the string in there that we want to replace with nothing which is the default. So we want to replace the cry of love with nothing in the title tag and in the file name. And we can click this replace button or you can just press the enter key and that'll accomplish the same thing. And there we go. That's gone from those and what we're left with is underscore characters. We don't want those in there. Some people like them, some don't. I don't. So I'm going to go up to trim replace, trim special characters and I'm going to tr want to trim one underscore or it could be two underscores, could be three underscores, in this case just one underscore replaced with nothing in the title tag and in the file name. We don't care about artist and replace. And those underscores are now gone. And what we need to do now is put in a track number so that these will end up in the right order in our playback device. 
And so I'll go up to track numbering and renumber tracks in order. And they're all numbered in order. And now down here, we've got the same thing going on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use that same clone to tags, clone folder and file structure. Then I'm going to go up to trim replace artist album. And I want to replace artist and album from the title and artist and album from the file name as well as all these residual characters and that's done. And then all we need to do is put in track numbers so renumber tracks and orders and those are done. Uh, now the other thing is you'll notice that we have uh, I do like to sometimes have the track number and the track title and also for the file name. You'll notice that there's uh, three different things going on here with those numbers. Uh, some th These are missing a dash, they've got a space. These have a dash and these have an extra space uh, on either side of the dash. And so to make all these consistent, I'm going to block all these at once. Keep in mind that again we're working across multiple folders which is very very time saving. And I'm going to trim the track number from the title and I'm going to trim the track number from the file name. We lost our track numbers. However, we can get them back very quickly by going up to track number, prefix track title with track number, and prefix file name with track number. It's important to note that the track, uh, the track number insert function is dependent on your track number right here. So you can go ahead and you can operate across multiple folders and you will get the track numbers in sequence for each folder. However, if we didn't have any track numbers, we could always renumber these all in one big batch. And this is great if you're talking about collections where you got CD1 and CD2, then you can just renumber them all in order and have them all play back in the right order and not have to worry about them getting grouped by track number. So that's a pretty cool thing. And so those are all done. Now the last thing we might want to do is just make sure that the genre is okay. And in this case the genre is missing for most of them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fix that by again selecting all these at once. And I'm going to go up to edit tags, edit genre. And I want maybe psychedelic. So PS and that auto completes and we got the word psychedelic in there. Uh, we could also select it from the drop down list which in this case yeah I want to use psychedelic rock instead. And this copy to V2 what this means is it will copy the old version 1 genre standard to the version 2 uh, genre standard and version 2 allows you to uh, use a customized genre description whereas version 1 is preset. So we'll go ahead and we'll just save them like that. And now we've got uh, two different we got a version 1 and a version 2 genre. Version 2 is custom and we're going to save all these and those are completely cleaned up and ready to go. Nice and uniform, easy on the eyes. Now down here what we've got is we've got a a lot of inconsistencies going on with the artist name. Uh, we've got uh, the track titles missing, the album is missing. Uh, in this case we can't rely on the clone folder and file function because we don't we only have a handful of miscellaneous files from this artist and we don't have an album folder underneath it. So I'm going to use a different cloning feature. I'm going to clone the file name to the artist and title tags this time and there's our track titles, there's our artist filled in. However, as you can see, our artist name is inconsistent. Now that would create a real problem uh, if we sync these over to our iTouch or our iPhone because these would all end up in their own little folders and be a heck of a job to navigate them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make them consistent by clicking on the first one and copying from artist, blocking all these and pasting to artist and now they're all the same. Now all these will end up in their own folder on my playback device. And we're missing an album here and so I'm going to go ahead and select them all again. I'm going to go to Edit Album. Use the Paste button because Manhattan Transfer is already on my Windows clipboard and I'm going to put a dash in and miscellaneous. Don't care about the year. Go ahead and save and there we go. So we've got Artist and Album consistent 
and uh, the other thing is these track titles are mostly in lowercase. Now if, to make for better readability we can normalize those. So go up to normalize text, normalize title, and they're all properly capitalized. And what you may want to do if, you're, if you've got a handful of miscellaneous files, you may want to put them in a uh, given order. So you can move these around in the list just like that. And once you're satisfied with the arrangement, you can click on all these and renumber them in order and now the tracks will play back in that order. So I want to go to track numbering, prefix track title, and voila. And now we want to pick a genre. I'm going to pick jazz. And those are done. So I'm going to go ahead and save selected. And down here what we've got is the same thing kind of going on with information missing. Now if we don't have this information in the file name or the folder file structure to fall back on, another way we can get the tags is to select these files, go up to Auto Lookup Tags for selected files. And what this is going to do is this is going to go on the internet and it's going to replace these tags with what we want them replaced with. In this case we want to replace the artist, we want to replace the album, the album year, uh, the title, uh, don't really care about the track number in this case, uh, replace the genre and apply to version 2 and go. And this will go online and it will bring back the tags based on the acoustic fingerprint of each file rather than relying on the file name or requiring you to type in an artist and then select from multiple albums. This will go out and it will find uh, the information based on how the file sounds. A very exciting feature and the online database that it connects to has over 90 million titles at its disposal. And uh, one thing to note however is that the results as you can see may not always be a hundred percent consistent and so we'll have to do just a little tiny bit of manual cleanup on those as soon as this is finished looking up the tags. Keep in mind that you could run this overnight on your collection and bring back all your genre tags and so all your music is properly stamped with the right genre or you could also replace your artist, your album, it's up to you. Uh, I would go and review any changes that have been made by this procedure to make sure that the results are correct and so in this case I want to fix the album, copy from album and paste to album and those are consistent and all we need now is track numbers and prefix the track number onto the track title and those are done. Um, however we do have these square brackets in the file name. I don't like square brackets. I want to get rid of them so I'm going to block all these. I'm going to go over to trim special characters and I want to replace square brackets with nothing in the title tag and in the file name. In this case just the file name and replace and the brackets are gone. I'll go ahead and we'll save those. And now the last thing we have here is we've got uh, the infamous track 1, track 2, track 3, track 4, etc, etc. Because we've got the tags already present, we can use those tags to rename the files. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to block them all. I'm going to go over to rename move files and I'm going to rename the files to match the title tag. And that's it. They're done. And so this concludes uh, my video, and in my next video I'll be talking about how to rip audio CDs. And the website for this product is www.mp3tagexpress.com. If you go there you'll find more information on the product and uh, be able to download it. Thank you for watching.